Hey, dear Tyler, good morning. And how are you doing? I really hope you're good. I hope you're fine. Um, thank you, thank you so much for um, your patience with me. I know I'm like two days late for this. And um, I just had a very, very busy period. Um, I was in Bauchi. Um, came back Monday. Um... After even giving the, the podcast Monday, I had um, rehearsals, I had an all night, I had another work to do. It was just a pretty overwhelming period. I was really, really stressed, so I couldn't just meet up with time. So I sincerely apologize for that. Please and please pardon me. But um, I'm now back up and doing. So yeah, we're in a good place. Uh, yeah, we're in a good place. So thank you so much for your patience with me. Thank you so much for your patience with me. Um, it's been it's been one heck of a ride. In a few weeks' time, dear Tyler is going to be a year. Uh, I think there's a whole you know, influx or whole flux of emotions, whole flux of emotions. Uh, you know, I'm just grateful to God, you know, I could have, you know, I could have given up like along the way, but we've seen it here. Um, I've heard amazing stories, you know, amazing feedback from a whole lot of us. Thank you so much. Uh, and I've had the little challenges here and there, but we're just grateful to God for it. So thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, I, I like to say us because I believe that that Tyler will grow to be a major community very soon. So thank you so much for staying with us and, you know, sharing this experience with us. Thank you so much. 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 Um, anyway, so let's get back into the topic. Right, so for this month we've been talking about, you know, prayer and how um, important it is and understanding the various aspects of prayer um, as believers, right? And um, today we're going to be discussing in the boardroom, um, you know, transact with caution. There is, I think there was... There was something that I learned from uh, Pastor Dr. Meshach Alpha about um, prayer not just being, you know, a communication per se um, before, you know, you and God and all, but then there is a, the, the, there is a transact transactional dimension right and the transactional dimension of prayer where it's like a uh, maybe boardroom courtroom you know but then you're making deals and demands they're like real real transactions that go on they're real real transactions that go on um i think you know most times um and maybe because of the culture that we've been brought up in, you know, the whole conservative culture, we we tend to use prayer, you know, just as a means of soothing our conscience. You know, um, just as a means of soothing our, our conscience uh, or, you know, just making us feel good, you know. We just lay our demands before God and we just go like that. Well, um, Pastor Alpha helped me to understand that. No, prayer goes beyond that. So um, in this whole series, we'll be seeing quite a lot of dimensions of prayer, right? Quite a lot of dimensions of prayer. It's not just our, you know, regular church in the name of Jesus, you know. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all of this. Thank you for all of that. And give us their daily bread. No. But there are moments where 
different dimensions you know pop up now you know last week i told us you know the times where uh was it last week on monday rather that i i shared that you know there are times where the absolute need to god on a personal level you have these discussions you know sometimes the normal rudiments of prayer may not just work do you understand but then you you open up to god you know you let him know how you feel exactly right and that's that's a major major uh aspect that we should get involved in now this transactionary transactional aspect of prayer is really really important it's really really important where you take hold of the promises of god and you make demands do you understand lord you promised this lord you promised this lord you have made this available for me as a believer right and so i am engaging every single arsenal that you have left available for me and i will get what i want i will get what i want it's like a place where you trade things where you trade things you use your faith as a currency you use hope as a currency you use you know love all of these arsenals that god has given knowledge wisdom you use them as your arsenal and then you make demands you place demands on certain things you place demands on certain things lord jesus you promised that if i do this this is going to happen you see I think over time we've been made to feel guilty for asking. And maybe sometimes um you know people have this or over time have shared you know that if you keep on asking over the same thing it shows lack of faith and you know but then we have you know scriptures and stories of people like Elijah you know he prayed seven times until his promise came and then onto the 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 rain you know the cloud was was seen but until the cloud was seen he didn't stop praying um Jesus says that you know pray and keep on praying until you receive your answer you get don't stop until you receive your answer speaking about you know um the unjust judge you know that woman that kept on pestering him until she got her promise and that was you know a description of prayer that do not be satisfied until your answer comes do not be satisfied until your answer comes do not be satisfied until your answer comes you need to understand that the realm of the spirit right is like a boardroom where decisions are being made over your destiny decisions are being made over your life decisions are being made do not be caught absent in such meetings do not be caught absent in such meetings the members of this boardroom of this boardroom rather would consistently be there they're making transactions day in day out day in day out day in day out now prayer is the opportunity for us to step in and make sure that the transactions over our lives are the things that we want are the things that we desire we can either leave people to define our destiny for us we can even leave circumstances to define our destiny for us because when your name is mentioned right whoever responds to that name determines you know um the cause um the cause of that destiny do you understand so your yes your present your answering present in that meeting is the inclusion of your amen or god forbid for any of their um any of their um pronouncements if you understand and so if you've ever been part of a business part of a group whenever you're having meeting you are representing stakeholders representing different viewpoints representing different individuals now your absence in that meeting allows whatever principal party that is there to make decisions on your behalf So you see the story of of Job, do you understand, where he was in silence and all, but then there was a meeting. 
There was a meeting that was carried out over his head and he was unaware. And so God calls us and is like, you know, come let us reason together. Bring your strong points. Bring your strong points. Why should this be done? 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 Yes, the promises of God are there, but you must be there to be able to engage it. You must be there to be able to engage it. And prayer gives us that opportunity. Prayer does what? Prayer gives us that opportunity. Are there certain things that you see in your life that you hate? Don't be lax about it and be like, eh, I know one day God is going to make it better. No, take the, you know, take your destiny by your hand. I don't know if that's the proper, um, I don't know if that's the proper terminology to use. But we have to get to the point where we choose to be responsible for the outcomes of our life. Don't allow parents to determine your destiny, especially in the in the courtroom of prayer. Do not allow um, circumstances define it. Do not even allow, um, you know, friends, family, or whoever. There is a blueprint that the Lord has given, which is His Word. And so as you search through scripture, Tyler, you find out what God's desire is for you. And then you come back into that boardroom and you make sure that those these transactions um, are made to your benefit. If you understand. These transactions are made to what? Your benefit that you engage them and that you enforce them. No, this was promised to me. This is what the blood of Jesus won for me. This is what the victory of Christ won for me. And so I must, I must, I must get them. I must get them. The goods that were, you know, purchased for me will not be rallied to another person. No, Jesus wants this for me, so I must get this. I clean this. This is mine. This is the reality that my people must enjoy. This is the reality that my destiny must enjoy. This is the reality that my family, my siblings must enjoy. My community must enjoy this. God says that I looked for a man who would stand in the gap on behalf of the land. Whenever you're handling transactions, right, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint-hearted. There is nothing, um, I don't know how best to put it, but for the lack of a better word, there's nothing civil about staking claims. Nothing civil about staking claims. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. that you forcefully demand what is yours. You're being plagued with sickness. And then the word of God says that by his stripes you are healed. He sent forth his word and it delivered them from all their destruction. So why is sickness plaguing your life? You enter into the room of transaction, the boardroom, and you begin to transact these promises and you stake claims on it. None shall be barren. These are words, these are promises in scripture. You find these words in scripture, you find these promises in scripture and you engage them, you engage them, you engage them, you engage them until they begin to see fruit, until you begin to see fruit in your life, Tyler. Until you begin to see fruit in your life, Tyler. And 
And so find these promises. Search the word. Search scripture, Taylor. Search it and make sure that you are the one in charge of the transactions of your life. Don't wake up one morning and find out that your life was designed by another. That the things that came into your life were brought in by another. The truth is that it doesn't matter who makes any transaction. You do, you, you granted permission. You granted permission, Tyler. You granted permission. And so can you make a promise to yourself today, Tyler, and say that I'm going to take charge of my life especially in prayer the things that i don't want i will not see the things i don't want i will not see the things i don't want i will not see the enemy has always wanted us to be relaxed about our destiny you know to just lay down in one position lay down in one spot and see what happens While he dictates and wrecks everything, I want you to wake up. I want you to stand up, Tyler, and say no more. And say no more. And say no more. And say no more. more. That you have decided to take your life. Decided to take responsibility. And begin to pray those things that you desire. Enforce those things that you desire. Enforce those things that you desire. Enforce those things that you desire. There is a covenant with the word of God that is meant to perform what it was sent to do. And so find out every word that the Lord God has spoken for your benefit, for your growth, for your protection, for your family. Find it and begin to speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Engage it as a transaction. Engage it as if you're in the courtroom. Engage it, engage it, engage it, engage it. Do not become a victim of your lack of speaking. Do not become a victim of your lack of knowledge. Do not be a victim of silence. And I really hope that as we engage all of these things, Tyler, that we'll begin to see things happen differently for us. Things will happen differently for us. Right, so... I really hope this blessed you um, and it encouraged you. Please and please, please and please do not be silent over your destiny, Tyler. Do not be silent over your destiny, Tyler. It's also, thank you so much for listening. I really hope it blessed you. Um, don't worry, an episode is coming out on Monday too. So we'll resume back to our schedule and all, right? So um, this is me signing out. Remember, I love you. I believe in you and I'm always rooting for you. <laughs>